hi and welcome to where my little corner of the internet it's not a it's not a racist hit it says uh make your text great again work on your text america We are returning to our roots a little bit with a haunting tale presented by renowned cartoonist Art Spiegelman. The subject matter of the Mouse series of graphic novels is incredibly serious and heavy, and this is multiplied by the fact that it's not only a harrowing tale about the real-life tragedy, but the story itself is non-fiction, being his father's true recollection of living through the Holocaust. Vladek's powerful retelling of his experiences is not the only story that progresses through the comics, however. We also follow the process of Art writing the comic and interviewing his father, as well as the dynamic of their relationship. Before we start, I do want to address that Art has said several times in interviews and in the incredible MetaMouse book, where is that book? MetaMouse book that he is displeased when people blow up certain frames of the comic for shock value or as a thumbnail for people to represent the entirety of the, his work. And in advance to people and anyone who follows his work, I would like to apologize. I'm going to be using uh, strips and frames to illustrate what I am saying as tastefully as I possibly can. I beg for forgiveness because I know the symbolism and subject matter in and of this book is going to trigger YouTube censorship robots hardcore. And while I think it would be hilarious to have some clever artistic work around, I think it would be disingenuous of me to talk about this momentously beautiful work of art in a public setting like YouTube and censor the stories, horrors, and realities that have been faced by the Jewish people to those interested in learning more and possibly connecting with them. Art has been supportive as far as I can tell with his work being criticized or commented on. It probably helps that, like myself, almost all comments I can find are overwhelmingly positive, minus one adaptation of the comic that was less fair than it was use. What I'm trying to say is I loved this book. It was powerful, and I'm sure eventually a lot of people who also appreciate the comic and are a lot smarter than I are going to come across this video, and I'm just trying to prepare them. I'm not a smart guy. I just really like this series of books. I feel it's important to discuss them and try to keep them in the modern conscience. That's enough self-deprecation. Mouse is in the house. The setting is 1935 Sosnowiec, Poland, post-Nazi annexation. Well, not really. The first location we get to visit is Art's childhood home in Rigo Park in Queens, where the epilogue takes place, planting the seed of curiosity in a young Art's mind, and where we pick up reading in Chapter 1 with Art visiting his father Vladek's house to begin research for his graphic novel. There will be a lot of scene switching in this comic. Most of the story will take place in the present day of 1978, with Art and Vladek having a back and forth in Rigo Park and equal parts the narrative past in nazi control. Poland. However, we do visit pre- and post-war Nazi Poland and Florida in small sections. So far, you've heard me called Mouse a book, a graphic novel, and a comic. From now on, I'm going to try and just call them comics. I remember reading an interview somewhere where Art noted he was frustrated with being credited for inventing the word graphic novel, when really he's a comic artist, and it's that form that he identifies with most. Well, everyone says now that you're sort of the, the father of the graphic I know, and I've been asking for a paternity test ever since. <laughs> you don't like that. I don't like the phrase because it's, uh, but it works. I mean, if you just, it depends what you mean by it. I mean, I've seen things that are called graphic novels. All they are is a bunch of stapled superhero stories bound together in one volume. If you think of graphic novel as uh, an ambitious comic book, then maybe that's all right. Semantics aside, art played an integral role in bringing comics into the world of critically acclaimed literature and art, so much so that the establishment tried to re his work so it sounded a little bit more prestigious on paper. Our journey truly begins with art going to his father's house as an adult, receiving a warm welcome. After dinner, Art and his father Vladek go to a secluded part of the house, and Vladek begins to spin his tale. The beginning of the story sets up the location as Poland, and follows young <laughs> bachelor Vladek as he falls in love with Art's mother, Anja, much to the chagrin of a current girlfriend of his. 
The chapter ends with Anja and Vladik marrying, and Art promising not to put these particular stories in the comic, as they are too personal, which hilariously we know doesn't happen, as they are front and center in chapter 1. Just starting the comic, we can see a bunch of cinematic and uh, fine art techniques that Mr. Spiegelman is using to illustrate the story. This first caught my eye originally on page 12. Though I didn't know it until I read Meta Mouse, it stuck out to me as just a beautiful and appealing page. Reading Art's passage on the page in Meta Mouse, it hit me like a ton of bricks why it had been so striking to me. We're able to read it normally like any other, with the frame of Vladek's body on the exercise bike leading us downwards into the spotlight of him as a young man. However, if you look at the page as a whole, it's also like a cubist representation of Vladek on the bike with the spotlight representing the wheel, as well as alluding to the cinematic swirling flashback transition. I don't believe in any other art form could anyone with art's talent and attention to detail have the freedom to apply techniques of fine art, cinematography, and literature. Art has such a mastery of each, he is able to blend them all so subtly that the only thing that jumps out to you immediately is just how carefully and beautifully crafted the comic is. Chapter 2 is where Vladek's broken English really began to stand out to me, and I think it really shows how dedicated Art was to preserve his father's telling of the story. Not only are we getting to live through Vladek's experience, but when brought back to the current day, we are getting to hear how he told it, almost preserving his father through the story. He mentions in MetaMouse that one of the more difficult parts of transcribing the book over to other languages the German language uh, specifically being the most difficult, was translating Vladek's broken jargon while keeping the cadence and feel of what we're able to experience in English. Vladek tells us about the events leading up to first seeing the Nazi flag in Poland, being Anja's first mental breakdown of the story and their journey to a mental well-being facility seems pretty nice and they are acting like they're really trying to help Anja recover. Returning to the present day, after knocking over his stash of pills for the third time, Vladek tells a strange tale about a doctor visit gone wrong that ends with him hopping hospitals mid-procedure and being given a glass eye. I believe this serves to be a first hint that possibly Vladek isn't exactly an honest narrator. While his experience is both amazing and horrifying, and to discredit it would be criminal, it's also 20 years out of date by the time Art is writing it down. And Art comments in the comic that it's also a story that has been rehearsed and edited by Vladek. And that's an interesting dichotomy that will come up multiple times throughout the rest of the present day story. Frequently Vladek's recollection will conflict with well-documented truths about Auschwitz, that Art will confront him on, again not to discredit Vladek, and the comics will attempt to find an ulterior reason for why Vladek's story could minutely be off while still acknowledging that Vladek's a stubborn old man with a waning memory. This chapter begins with Vladek being discontent with dinner and picking the story up in his adolescence. His father attempts to help him and his brother with draft dodging technique. Art quickly redirects him to 1939, soon after he was drafted into the Polish army. Vladek, soon after a confrontation, is captured and taken as a prisoner of war, experiencing immediately the lesser treatment given to Jewish people, and so far seems unfair but not unexpected for what I would imagine the POW treatment would be, despite the Polish prisoners being shown having a much nicer time. Vladek eventually reunites with his family in Sosnowiec, using his cunning wit and some local help to narrowly miss being executed and shot by Nazis in now right-controlled Poland. Changing gears to present day, we learn that Vladek is frustrated with his current wife Mala's question about his will and his money. While Art isn't much nicer to her or any more sympathetic to Vladek, I certainly am beginning to sympathize with Vladek's present day situation, where his wife is constantly uh, complaining and short with him and seemingly sticking around only for his wealth. Not to say Vladek's negative treatment of Mala can be justified either. And in maybe the only time I've ever laughed at a comic book out loud, the chapter ends with Vladek throwing out one of Art's coats and giving him an older one of his. It was right around this point I realized Art wasn't trying to make anyone look like the good guy on this project. Everyone has flaws and treats people selfishly in some situations, and in a comic book about a person's holocaust experience, it's a 
powerful tool to write yourself as a flawed character who gets upset when you are full aware your dad is trying to keep you warm in a strange way and genuinely just trying to spend time with his grown son. As of page 69, nice. I had uh, I had completely uh, fell in love with this work. Very often while Vladik is telling his story, they will stop to say or do something in a sort of juxtaposition with the evils of the tale. For instance, when being forced to clean a stable impossibly quick as a POW, Vladik stops the narration to yell at Art for ashing on his carpet until he cleans it up. Putting myself in his position, I see a strong argument for Vladek uh, being very emotionally invested in the story he is uh, recounting to his son, and while he is yes proven to be a bitter person, to begin to relive an experience like what World War II must have been as a Jewish man, it must be stressful and a painful one to tell, causing many powerful emotions to bubble up. The character flaws we charmingly left off on in Chapter 3 are frustratingly reinforced at the beginning of Chapter 4. Vladek now expecting more from his son's visits and Art coming later and later in the night, trying to avoid some of the awkwardness and conversation we've gotten to see over the last few nights. These little uh, nuances beginning each chapter with the frustrations of a somewhat broken family of flawed people could not hit uh, home harder for me. I think a lot of families nowadays are fractured in a similar way, and it can feel like one person is to blame. Maybe this is a revelation I've come to with age, but the way Art writes it here, being as unbiased as I believe he can be, we the audience get to see everything that contributes to a father and son's real relationship from the outside. It feels viscerally real to me, and I don't know, I felt that was uh, worth noting. This isn't just a lauded nonfiction comic about a Holocaust experience, it's also a nonfiction story about a real fractured relationship and one that I think a lot of uh, hard-headed idiot kids like myself could have learned from. Vladek picks back up with him home and returning to work. Nazis now in almost full totalitarian swing, and controlling who can work where and how much goods get distributed to who. Not having legal papers and making money in black market dealings, Anja's entire family is living off of the money he makes and the rations given to them by the Germans. And we also begin to start getting whispers and rumors about Auschwitz. And some families, individuals of old age, or just anyone the Germans can find without papers are being sent over. Soon after witnessing abductions and being cheated themselves by German soldiers, they are relocated to the 12-member family's first ghetto, where they live in a two-and-a-half bedroom apartment, and the rest of the family begins to witness firsthand the true horrors to come of the Nazi-led Reich in the form of a public hanging of a Jewish family. Vladek in the present day gets tired and it's time to reflect a little before moving on. When learning about the Holocaust, I've often assumed that the Jewish people were all rounded up quickly and sent to death camps and uh, everyone was just okay with it. It's been an intense learning experience for me to read this account and realize the segregation of these people took place over the course of uh, a few grueling years, getting support from local Gentiles and even some Jewish people accustomed to the mistreatings. While it was seen as unfair and unadvantageous for Jewish people, it reads like it was happening so methodically and not just a quick mass exodus of the uh, nearly entire Jewish population. Going from citizens to second class citizens to victims of war crimes in a few years is radically fast, but it's reading as if it was one hardship after another, leading to some distorted, disgusting, natural uh, conclusion. The only one I guess this sort of treatment could lead to. While most people felt powerless, turned a blind eye, or even helped in self-interest. Not to get too political, but being a centrist of sorts, this story has completely turned me off from any sort of nationalism. I understand this is as radical as it gets, but as of reading the way the Nazis utilized the ideology so gross and it's hard to see how it could turn into a good thing. Sorry, back to the story. The chapter closes with Art getting a small recounting of uh, Mala's experience with passport stamping, which upon further reading is a whole thing on its own the Nazis used to dehumanize Jews partnered by replacing their names, keeping them out of politics and public schools, and keep in mind this was all before the Yellow Star was a thing, and her parents experienced trying to survive and keep her alive at the same point in time as Vladek, and of course her trying to vent about him. The beginning of chapter 5, Art is woken up by a phone call from his father, 
and is asked again to do some chores around the house. When arriving, his father is as stubborn and as frustrated as ever, though a bit more passive aggressive than usual. Art asks Mala if she knows why, and she says he's read a comic he's previously made about his mother's suicide. After discovering the comic and asking his father's thoughts, he uncharacteristically tells him honestly and calmly, showing Art support and pride. Vladek then picks up at 1943, the family smaller now that the elderly have been sent away, being relocated again to a new town, Thradula, and a smaller cabin. In this place, a few more horrors of the Nazi regime begin to emerge. Children are killed brutally and without conscience. People are abducted and taken to camps daily. Vladek comes up with a creative and crafty way to keep his family safe, eventually leaving most of his family, giving his son Raichu, Raichu? to a family in a neighboring community with uh, stronger influence and only being able to bribe a German soldier to get himself and his wife Anja out safely. This safety being another community heavily policed by the Nazis and Jewish officers. And here too the Nazis begin to drain its Jewish population sending them to Auschwitz. Vladek and Anja only able to escape with the help of Vladek's officer cousin and his unwillingness to put any more faith into German soldiers. The chapter ends with Art and Vladek walking to the bank, and Vladek signing a key to Art to inherit his lockbox full of prized possessions, while venting more about Mala demanding she get money from him. This chapter is the first, I think, to really show the horrors and sweeping systemic hatred of the Jewish people. It's one horrible thing to be put into a lower class of citizen because of something so innocuous, but for that hatred to turn it into beating children because they cry too hard after being separated from their parents, the events that we have been told so far have been horrible, but I believe this is the first truly soulless evil that is difficult to even visualize, but uh, there will be more unfortunately. Art enters the house immediately greeted with Mala's grievances, while he expresses his own about his father's character. I still can sympathize a bit with Mala, although I am seeing more and more of Vladek's struggle and how his uh, constant mandatory resourcefulness for years and years required to live could leave him with this stingy habit. And in a little meta-narrative, Art's concern over showing his father this way irked me just a little bit. I understand that his father does play all too well into the miserly Jewish stereotype. His father's narration and art's writing did such a good job at showing why that stereotype possibly came to exist. The Jewish people, in order to survive the Holocaust, had to be extremely resourceful or clever or lucky, and Vladek certainly was not incredibly lucky. He had to use every fiber of his being at seemingly every turn for years to come out of the situation he lived in. Art very obviously left this moment of uh, hesitation in because he realized that uh, the writing to come was more than enough to show Vladek's character traits aren't a gross caricature of the Jewish people. He's been through one of the greatest atrocities of the modern era and survived. The mentality he needed to survive that has changed the way he views materials and goods, which I believe has led to the quirks he exhibits in the comic. Art then shows Vladek some of the early sketches of the Mouse comic that we are reading now, and Vladek breaks character for a moment and praises the example pages Art shows him. In another moment of Vladek hitting me right in the heart, he compares him to the only household cartoonist he knows, Walt Disney, again showing his support to his estranged son. Returning to Sosnowick and uh, wandering the streets, Vladek and Anja are able to find shelter through a network of Poles who harbor Jewish people. However, they are offered a chance to be smuggled to Hungary. After a seemingly successful test run with another family, they seize the opportunity and attempt an escape from Poland. Vladek and Anja board their train and pay the smugglers upon arrival. Germans scream the awful words, ripping off their proverbial Polish masks, exposing them as Jews. And having been duped, immediately they are sent to Auschwitz. Vladek reflects on how he referred a family member hiding in the city to the family who had hid him away, and how they survived the rest of the war there. And Art depicts his father sitting there, thinking about that with regret. Like, how incredible is that? Almost four years of cunning, ingenuity, and luck. One bad call was all it took to lose everything and be sent to hell on earth. The burden would have been too much for my 
shoulders, knowing every little tiny decision made could be the unlucky one. The book ends this chapter with Art asking for the diaries his deceased mother kept that Vladek mentioned a few chapters ago. Vladek, tired from telling the story, admits to destroying them after her suicide. Art, frustrated knowing he is without the maternal artifacts intended for him exclusively, lashes out at his father. And his father shows the most weakness we've seen uh, throughout this whole book, explaining he was too depressed to keep the heirlooms of his wife after she passed. You made me cry. Mouse One was incredibly powerful to me. It gave us a look into a young Jewish man coming into adulthood and getting his life started paralleling the beginning of the Nazi Reich's takeover. Alongside that, we also learn about his struggles today through the eyes of his son and our author. If I had to make one complaint, it would be, uh, I can't imagine buying this comic in August of 1986 and then waiting just over six years for the sequel to be published. Is that a complaint? I don't think so. I suppose now would be an arbitrarily good time to talk about the elephant in the room, so to speak. Why animal heads? If you do any sort of a deep dive into Mouse or Spiegelman himself, you're probably going to hear a, that question. If you're trying to understand and piece together the heart of what Spiegelman is trying to show with this collection of comics, I don't think the answer to that question is as important and it becomes a bit of an annoying meme of a question. But if I want to be able to say I tried to give a comprehensive conversation about the work, it would be remiss not to spend a few minutes talking about what relevance I think it has. The Jews are mice, as they are resilient and refuse to be exterminated by the Reich. And I believe the metaphor serves as a beautiful, sterile, and clean contrast to the dirty and disease-ridden rats that Hitler's propaganda likened them to. The Germans are cats, as they are powerful, nature's purebred murder machines, and can play with their prey, while also giving you brief moments where you can sympathize with a few individuals. The Polish are depicted as pigs, not because they are dirty or greedy, and Metamouse Art says he wasn't looking for a pejorative, just trying to find an animal outside of the cat and mouse food chain, and decided on the pig, and it likely helped that because it was another insult thrown at a populace by Hitler, he often referred to the Poles as schwein. It uh, fit with a the theme of using Hitler's uh, alliterations against them, as well as also showing uh, that the Poles weren't the intended target. There are other animals as well in the comics, Americans as dogs, British as fish, Swedes as deer. While these are not chosen arbitrarily, little art does is, I think its uh, main use was to show who was who and give the reader insight to when a character was hiding in plain sight. Vladek is often portrayed with a pig mask when out in the open pretending to be Polish. Well, not pretending he is Polish, but pretending not to be a Jewish Pole. It's not spelled out. You just see it. I think that is a huge advantage comics have over traditional literature, and a tool that not enough authors outside of traditional literature use enough. This is all just what I think though. There is a really good interview with him from the University of Washington where he himself talks about the subject. Immediately before we even get started, we're given the title and here my troubles begin. After that last bit, the trouble starts here? Mr. Spiegelman, the first comic wasn't a trouble? On my first reading, I could only imagine that title was the comic version of Clickbait to get the fans anxiously awaiting the next mouse to be excited for this book's release. But shit really goes down in these pages. The story picks back up with Art and his wife on vacation discussing the mouse books when he receives a call saying his father has had a heart attack. Being true to character, this isn't the case. Instead, Vladek's wife, Mala, has emptied his bank account and drove off, leaving him there. Art and his wife, Francois, begin trying to help him balance the books so he can try to get some of his money back through more legal avenues. With Vladek in poor health and uh, everyone pointing this out, Art seems to get overwhelmed with the fact that he's probably going to have to put up with his father a lot longer than he'd like, and gets upset. Francois, being a voice of reason, volunteers to recount the books to find a missing dollar while Vladek and Art go out for a walk, and his recounting picks back up with getting off the truck to Auschwitz. Here he explains the horrors about the camp with a perceived calmness and a clear recollection that is a little shocking. With the slow build-up to this moment, however, I suppose his nerves have been acclimated to the horrible conditions, 
And again, this is just a natural progression of the downward spiral. Ledek has been able to use the skills he's been honing in Nazi-ruled life, even here to slip past the deadly punishments and treatments the Germans have devised for them. However, there are a few luxuries he is able to gather for himself or others. However, the few luxuries he is able to gather for himself or others are subject to extreme scrutiny and a possible vindication. Vladek is able to get out of a 200 person work trip through a Polish prisoner, and we skip to the present day with Art and Vladek sneaking past a guard into a retirement villa. He comes too often to unwind, and they are able to sit down. Art turns on his audio recorder, and they begin talking about the rest of the story. Very shockingly, that is not where we pick up in Chapter 2. We start with Art in human form donning a mouse mask, reflecting on the critical reception, movie offers, and general success of the first book, while atop a pile of dead humanoid mice. I don't think I need to explain the metaphor here. As with any commercially successful project, Art is being given a lot of questions and offers to capitalize on its success, while the hopeful tycoons and journalists carelessly uh, climb the bodies to reach him at the top. Art's character gets smaller and smaller as they bombard him with questions and offers. Soon he leaves the noise to talk to his psychiatrist, a Holocaust survivor himself, about his current well-being and the ghost of his father. Immediately following the session, he listens to the audio recordings we left on chapter 1 with, hearing and regretting the impatience he had with his father as the conversation we started at in the Pines Retirement Villa begins. Plodek talks about uh, switching jobs often in Auschwitz, while still finding ways to keep tabs on and take care of his wife. One of the first jobs he takes involves him tearing apart one of the gas chamber buildings, where he meets some of the prisoners whose forced labor included cleaning and preparing these rooms. One prisoner, ignoring Vladek's request to not hear any further exposition, acts as a vehicle to explain to us, the reader, how the gas chamber operated and what dirty work was required to keep it running, as well as show some of the unimaginable truth of what happened when the building couldn't keep up with the Nazis' demand. The chapter ends with Vladek going to bed and Art using a spray can to kill a fly, eerily referencing Zyklon B and its use to dispatch the Nazis' perceived pests hearkening back to the juxtapositions in chapter 3 in book 1. This chapter is a little difficult to write through. It's like three layers deep of recollection. Like 1986 art is listening to a 1979 conversation of experiences that happened in 1942. I'm sorry if I lost you a little there, but art does a really good job of uh, unconvoluting it through his panels. Art did a lot of research leading up to beginning to document his father and uh, oftentimes throughout the comics he has asked about some of his findings to see if Vladek was there or if he remembers hearing anything about it. In this instant, Art asks about a revolt that happened where three SS soldiers were killed. Vladek comments on how he remembers that they were from Sosnovik, remember that place, and friends with Anja, Art's mother. He remembers mostly, however, that they were hung next to where he worked for a really long time. In the present day, they go on a drive to a grocery store, and Vladek's story again continues. Vladek begins retelling his story with the evacuation of Auschwitz as the Russians and Americans begin to push further into Nazi-controlled areas. He is taken to another camp, Daishu. The journey there is a tragedy in and of itself, and Vladek again is only able to survive by his wit, creating a makeshift hammock and keeping above the trampling crowd. Here, overpopulation becomes a devastating and horrific issue. With no chambers at this camp, it's harder for the Germans to properly dispose of the bodies, multiplied with the new risk of typhoid fever spreading rampant, and this even Vladek is not able to escape. Clinging to life, Vladek is able to hang on just long enough for the Nazis to request volunteers to be traded to the Swiss as war prisoners. The chapter ends with Art's wife picking up a hitchhiker who happens to be a black man, which unfortunately reveals a lot about Vladek. Despite the overwhelming persecution he has faced over his life, he still has the ability to harbor that same discriminatory short-sightedness. 
I think it can be explained with a scarred man's mistrust and complete inability to let a simple grudge go. However, it's still an incredibly gross irony that even if it does come from a place of weakness, it's still so obviously wrong and uh, pointed out in the following panels. The chapter quickly ends afterwards. I think one of the most beautiful things I heard while researching this book is suffering does not bring a heightened awareness or empathy to others. It only brings suffering. Art does an incredible amount of work in this comic to make everyone seem fallible. No character is perfect or even undisputably right in the books, excluding Francois who seems to represent the voice of reason. And when talking about a subject matter as disturbing as the Holocaust, it's a risky move to take the nihilistic route of morality is in the eye of the beholder. Art is able to take that idea and make it very real with the snippets he is choosing to tell us. Showing us that just because Vladek went through Auschwitz, was a POW, a misplaced Jewish veteran in now Nazi Poland, and has his uh, children and family taken away from him, all of them presumed dead, he's only suffered, he hasn't changed who he was, he didn't grow some super moral understanding of empathy of others' hardships, he simply suffered. And in a world so saturated with heroes who hold the moral high ground and are always teaching about the bad guy's mistakes, it's refreshing to see something real. And to try and sell that idea, I'd like to pose a question. How many times have you heard from friends stories, movies, or reality shows? I have been hurt in previous relationships, and now I know who I can trust. We don't hear that. At least I haven't. I always hear, I have been hurt in previous relationships, so I will not trust you. Because that is how regular people function. We don't gain empathy or most of the times learn from our mistakes just because we have suffered. We just suffer. We start on the train Vladek rides to be released to the Swiss. In true Nazi fashion, however, they didn't give the Jewish people the courtesy. They just stop the train and get off, sending them to the next city where the Americans should be, too afraid to progress to meet them. Vladek and an old friend of his named Shivek go from city to city running into several Nazi patrols and continuing to just narrowly escape dying by their hand. Eventually, they run into the Americans and they immediately take to Vladek due to his ability to speak English. The Nazis really begin to show their fear of the American-Russian invasion in the abandonment of their duties to persecute Jewish people. They have them take the train to the next town without them. Uh, when they trap them against the lake, they run away instead of slaughtering them. And when the locals try to tattle on Vladek and his friend's hiding spot, the Germans just drive away. Back in the present day, Art and Vladek begin to go through a box of Vladek's old family photos. When going through Anja's side of the family, the photos pool and overtake the panels. And it does a really good job of emulating that feeling of you and your grandpa sitting down going through a bunch of old photos while he tells you the stories of each one. When going through Vladek's side of the family's photos, we just get one picture. And he explains how the rest either died through Auschwitz or other tragedies leading up to the Nazi Reich. Vladek, whose failing health is showing more, lies down and accepts Art will have to come back later to help him with chores, and Art shows some regret for working his father so hard today. Chapter 5 is the final chapter we get to spend time with uh, Vladek and Art. And we start with Art listening to the recordings he's taken and receiving yet another phone call, this time from Vladek's ex-wife Mala, surprisingly. About Vladek's severely decreased health, Art flies down to meet them and get the rest of Vladek's story. Vladek and Anja have both been freed from Nazi control and are trying to reunite with one another. Vladek making a journey to Belsen, where a lot of Jewish people are being released and gathering to try and find friends or family to reunite with her and Anja made her way back to Sosnowiec, where Poles are still protective of the Jewish property that was appropriated is the nice word I suppose. Anja doesn't try to take anything back and she's able to find a place to stay, but having not heard word, she is afraid Vladek along with the majority of her family has died. The chapter finishes with Vladek walking along train tracks for weeks until he finally reaches Sosnowiec, and uh, the two are reunited. 
The end of the entire series I'll leave as a surprise. After reading through the comics a few times, it, it, it still chokes me up a bit. And I would encourage everyone to read the books. They easily deserve the Pulitzer Prizes they've been awarded and are essential reads in my opinion. While Vladek's story has a conclusion because it's taken place nearly 40 years before Vladek's narration, whether or not it was a happy ending or not, we know in fact there was a resolution. However, the conflict between Vladek and Art, or Vladek and Mala, are never resolved, which is a bit of a shock. We don't know if Art empathizes more than at the end of the books, and rises past his frustrations with his father's personality, or if he takes care of him while exiting his golden years. And we never hear if Mala gains or doesn't from Vladek. All of those stories dissolve away towards the end, and because of the nature of life, we just have to move on not knowing these answers. I know I spent a lot of time talking about how great a literal master veteran of the comic genre is. That's, that's not a hard thing to argue, but Mouse is a very powerful and emotional story that finds ways to keep you so frustrated with its characters and how they interact with one another. And art doesn't let that uncomfort stop there. If I had to guess what the story's theme is, I would probably say, please find healthy ways of dealing with guilt with the smallest pinch of nihilism. The whole collection feels like Art is chastising himself while writing his character and showing us the worst of his actions while with his father, as well as showing us Vladek's faults. It feels to me we are watching Art wrestle with the regret he feels for treating his father poorly sometimes and the emotion of, well, Vladek wasn't that great of a guy either as well as tackling the personal questions of should I write about the Holocaust? Am I profiting off this tragedy or am I taking advantage of all of the victims? And in book two, those feelings heavily start there and evolve into the feeling of am I taking advantage of my father? Am I using him and his experiences during his last few years for my profit? As well as Vladek's anguish and guilt for his lost son and wife. The comics and the book Meta Mouse, which was a great help for writing uh, this video, are all pure excellence. There is no one on this earth in my mind whose attention to detail and craftsmanship compared to the way Art Spiegelman has crafted this collection of literature or has used as many artistic, whether it be literary, cinematic, or otherwise, to create a subtle and emotionally all over the place work of art and I can't recommend reading them more. Art certainly played a large role, much to his chagrin, in bringing the truth stories and conversations of the Holocaust to a place where it was able to be publicly discussed in the mainstream. And while he jokingly complains about it in interviews as it wasn't his intention to invent a genre to be awarded at the Oscars, and it weirds him out that the books are read in colleges, I think he certainly does hold a lot of the credit for empowering the discussions we were and are able to have. The Holocaust taught the world a lesson. The word genocide had to be invented to describe what was happening, and the guilt he seems to feel for possibly using the story he did not experience is far and away outweighed by the opening of the floodgates to share it with something we won't forget. And that's one thing that makes me proud to be alive in the time I am. Is it annoying to be reminded of our collective past constantly? Sure. But while time flies by me and I grow older, I can look out my window and witness that the world, piece by irritatingly tiny piece, is becoming a more tolerant place. And it's because of uh, media like this that not only preserves the stories history has to tell, but reminds us of what our hubris is capable of when absent of humility. Wow, you watched that whole thing? Wow, you watched that whole thing? Thank you so much. I've got some links down there if you, uh, if you want to check them out. I don't know. I'm not, uh, not great at outros. Next video coming much sooner than this one came, so thank you so much for watching.